Hello everyone, welcome to a Small Turbo YouTube channel. So, itong video na ginagawa ko ngayon is uh, kinapakita dito ang summative assessment na ibibigay ko sa aking mga online students, online class students. Okay, so this would be your tool, my dear students, for you to get perfectly the summative assessment for next week. Okay, so number one, let's start. 200 grams of sugar was dissolved in 100 ml of water. The solution is said to be, of course, the answer is concentrated. So take note of the word 200 grams of sugar dissolved in 100 ml of water. So, yung sugar, medyo marami kaysa yung sa water. So what happened is it's concentrated. Then, how is 10% sugar solution prepared? So 10% sugar solution, it's 10 grams of sugar dissolved in 90 grams of water. As a sort of check, it's 10 divided by 100. So it's mass of solute divided by mass of so solution. So solution can be solved by adding the solute and the solvent. So 10 divided by 100 times 100, the answer is 10%. Use your calculator if you want to check. Next number. In order to compute for percent by mass, which of the following ratios is correct? So, recall the formula in computing for percent by mass. It's mass of solute divided by mass of solution times 100. So, by the way, may nag-ask sa akin, bakit ang bilis ko raw magsalita? So, may limit lang ako kasi sa recording 15 minutes. Kaya kailangan ko yung i-maximize. Okay, let's proceed. In order to compute for percent by volume, which of the following ratios is correct? So, it's volume of solute divided by volume of solution times 100. Okay, just recall the formula that I gave you. Next, how do we prepare the 70% alcohol? The correct answer is letter B. Measure out 70 ml of alcohol in a 100 ml graduated cylinder. Transfer to 100 ml volumetric flask. Then add enough water until 100 ml mark is reached. So that's how you are going to prepare 70% alcohol. Alcohol. Next. Calculate the percentage by mass of a 10 grams of sodium hydroxide that are contained in a 200 grams of solution. So all you have to do using your calculator, it's 10 divided by 200 times 100. The answer is 2%, uh, 5%, I mean. Okay, 10 divided by 200. So that's 0 0.05, if I'm not missing again, times 100, that's 5%. Then, there are some antibiotics that need to be shaken before use. Which type of mixture do they belong? So, that's suspension. So, recall suspension. Okay, so there's... There are... Suspended particles at the bottom. Next, which statement is not true regarding pure substance? The correct answer is... Pure substances can be further broken down into simpler substances. So it could be it could be an element or a compound that's that belongs to pure substances. So next, what skill is used by a scientist when he or she listens to the sounds that are produced by whales? So the answer is making observations. So your hint there is Listen, okay. If it uses the five senses, then that has something to do with observations. Next, which of the following substance composed of one type of atom? So the correct answer is element. Next, compounds are formed when two or more. The answer is elements are combined. So just recall, for example, water H two O. So the compound, it's a compound. Elements composing that compound H2O are hydrogen and oxygen. Then, which of the following ingredients is an element? So, the correct answer is letter A, calcium. Then, the following are constituent elements of sodium glutamate, except. So, the correct answer is iron, letter C. Next, which of the following ingredients is a compound? Letter B, it's calcium chloride. The rest are elements. 
you can you can see this name names here calcio magnesium manganese in the periodic table of elements that's why they're elements and only calcium chloride you cannot see in the periodic table next carbon dioxide sodium chloride sugar and salt are examples of compounds yes compounds they're compounds combination of two or more elements already how do you classify elements from compounds? The correct answer is compounds are composed of two or more molecules. Always remember that. Okay, why is it important to be familiar with elements and compounds? So the answer is to classify them accordingly. To classify which are elements which are compounds. So you have to be familiar with them. Next, which of the following statements is true about elements? The correct answer is commonly grouped according with their set of characteristics. Next, which of the following statements is true about compounds? The correct answer is homogeneous in nature or yes, homogeneous in nature. Next, what elements made up of the compound potassium nitrate? The correct answer is potassium and nitrogen. You may do your research in the Google about potassium nitrate. So, the correct answer is potassium and nitrogen. Next, which of the following is to correctly match compound? The correct answer, again, is sodium and chlorine, sodium chloride. Okay, next, sodium is a silvery solid that reacts violently with water and chlorine is a green poisonous gas. When they combine to form the compound sodium chloride or we know as salt, there is a fundamental change in the properties. Salt is often added to our food when cooking and is safe to eat. Which of the following statements supports the idea presented? The correct answer is true to all compounds. They no longer have the properties of the elements that make them up. They have their own properties. Next, what is the correct order of the steps in the scientific method? The correct answer is first ask questions, then make a hypothesis, test the hypothesis, analyze results, draw conclusions, then communicate results. Next, which of the following hypothesis is written correctly? So the correct answer is if I freeze a tennis ball, then it will not bounce as high. Recall our discussion regarding if-then statement in making the hypothesis. Next, a scientist conducted an experiment to determine how the amount of salt in a body of water affects the number of plants that can live in the water, which is the independent variable. So recall independent variable, it's the what you do in the experiment, okay? So it's the amount of salt in the water. Next, a scientist conducted an experiment to determine how the amount of salt in a body of water affects the number of plants that can live in the water. In this experiment, which is the dependent variable? Okay, so it's the number of plants in the water. Remember, dependent variable is the what will happen in the experiment. Next, what is the last step in the scientific method? It's letter D, drawing conclusion. Next, why is experiment important? So the answer is, it allows for new discoveries and knowledge in science. Why is scientific method an important process in doing experiments? So the answer, it ensures that the results can be trusted and repeated. Next, what skill is involved when you use find five, this is five, senses to gather information? The correct answer is observing. Next, which step that follows formulating an objectively testing hypothesis? It's conducting experiments. Next, what do you call a series of logical steps that is followed in order to solve a problem? The answer is scientific methods. Next, how do scientists test their hypothesis? Of course, it's by doing experiments. Next, what do you call the information gathered during experiments? The answer is data. What steps should be completed first to solve a problem? The answer is recognizing and identifying the problem. Next, which of the following steps to solve a problem must be completed last? Okay, can you still remember? It's the, okay, this is already repeated. It's drawing conclusions. 
Next, Joseph wants to compare the chemical properties of two substances. In doing it, he prepared two flasks containing the substances and labeled them liquid A and liquid B. He monitored the boiling points of the liquids and found that the boiling points were 100 degrees Celsius for substance A and 1,100 or 110 degrees Celsius to 112 degrees Celsius for liquid B. How would you classify the two liquids? Okay, so liquid A is a pure substance while liquid B is a mixture. Okay, just recall the properties of the pure substance and that of the mixture. If the pure substance is a sol uh, liquid or if the, if the sample is a liquid, for, it to, for you to identify whether it's a pure substance or a mixture, you're going to boil because the boiling temperature of a substance is constant whereas the boiling temperature of a mixture is changing. Okay, it keeps on changing just like this. It is not fixed. Next. Alright, next. Sea water is a mixture made up of salts and water. Which of the following statements best describes sea water? The correct answer is sea water cannot be filtered and it shows a single physical appearance. Next, which of the following statements distinguishes pure substance from mixtures? The correct answer is have constant boiling temperature and melting temperature. So that's a pure substance. It has a constant boiling temperature. If it's a liquid, you're going to boil it because it has a constant boiling temperature. If it's a solid sample, for you to identify whether it's a pure substance or a mixture, you're going to melt it because the spear substance will melt smoothly whereas for the mixtures there are some portions that won't melt okay mixtures can be separated by physical methods while pure substances cannot be separated which of the following groups contain only pure substances the correct answer iron ethanol calcium fluoride the rest they are they are mixtures or some of them there are mixtures carbon dioxide air and water at sea level and or an odorless and colorless materials boils at 100 degrees Celsius and freezes at 0 degrees Celsius what inference can be drawn from this observation I'm so sorry for this uh, car it should be there included in the options above but happened to be included here never mind okay so the correct answer for here this problem is the material is a pure substance next table salt is made up of two elements sodium and chlorine sodium is a very reactive metal once you have placed even a piece size of this metal in water a violent reaction occurs on the other hand chlorine exists as a gas it is used as a poisonous chemical weapon during the war but when a chemical change between the two takes place it would form a new and non-poisonous substance known as sodium chloride which of the following does not correctly describe this observation so the answer is a sodium or sodium and chlorine are both substances while sodium chloride is a mixture next a student investigates the nature of an unknown substance he decided to heat up a sample of a blue green powder and eventually turn into colorless gas and a black solid all these materials are substances what was the nature of the original substance so the correct answer is compound because heating the sample produced two different substances next Sugar is heated in test tube until it is completely changed into black mass and droplets of water. This experiment indicates that the sugar is, the correct answer is heterogeneous mixture. Okay, this one. A clear colorless liquid boils sharply at 90.5 degrees Celsius. It dissolves in alcohol and burns when ignited. Analysis reveals that it has a definite composition, 92% carbon and 8% hydrogen by mass. Which property of the liquid establishes it as pure substance and not a mixture? So, it boils constantly and has a definite composition. Next. A mixture contains ammonium chloride and sand. Ammonium chloride sublimes. Ammonium chloride can be separated from the sand by? The answer is sublimation. Okay, so our recording time is almost over. So I will just flash the correct answers here. And so thank you for watching this video. And I hope you will get correct. I mean, you will get perfect in your summative test. Okay? So thank you so much. Bye-bye.